Well, good evening, family of God. This is your brother, Apostle G. Hightower, coming in for Third Watch Prayer Force. Our prayer for this year is for God to be glorified in every area of our lives. We're coming in tonight for Third Watch Prayer Force, family of God, and we want to come in worshiping God, thanking him, praising him, honoring him for who he is, what he has done, and what he will do in the lives of us as his children. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm right here with you. Don't worry. I'm not on camera yet, but I will be here with you in just a minute. But I want you to just focus your attention on Jesus. Let us go up before him in worship tonight. We're asking God, I, God, I want you to be glorified. Oh, Shia, my God, be glorified in my relationships. God, be glorified in my finances. God, be glorified in every area of my life, oh God. Hallelujah. Be glorified. Come on, let's worship. Let's worship. Oh, yes, God. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless you, Sandra. Hallelujah. Yes, we want God to be glorified in every area of our lives. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. Come on, family. You all go ahead and share the broadcast even as we come in and we begin to worship the Lord. Go ahead and hit that share button. I'll be on camera in just a minute, but I want to come in and let's worship just for a few minutes. Yes, God, have your way in this place tonight, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Oh, yes, God. Come on, let's worship. Let's worship. Let's worship. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, God. We love you, Jesus. We worship you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, let's worship the Lord tonight. Bless you, Delana. Good to see you, dear. Let's worship the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Worship, worship. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, yes, God, be glorified. Hey, yes, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's go, family, let's go. Be glorified in the earth, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. 
Yes, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless you, King Charles. Bless you, Miss Lenise. Be glorified, Jesus. Yes, God. Be glorified. Be glorified, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, God. Be glorified, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, God. Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, God. Be thou glorified, Jesus. Be glorified in our homes. Be glorified in our jobs. Be glorified in our families. Be glorified in our businesses. Be glorified in our romantic relationships, God. Be glorified in our finances. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Thank God for everybody being here tonight. Welcome. Family, I'm so grateful to have everybody here in the third watch prayer force. Yes, it is Thursday now crossing over into Friday morning. Glory be to God. It's so grateful to have all of you here. Bless you, Miss Aisha. Bless you, Miss Shanjane. Good to see you, Ness Ness. Bless you, little sister. Listen, tonight, family, we're going to get into it. There's a rich word from the Lord tonight that ties in with what God is saying to all of us as believers for 2023. And so tonight, family, uh, I'm not coming to pick on nobody, but I am coming to expose that devil tonight. We're going to expose the spirit of fear tonight, family, because it's only fear that wants to keep us in this familiar place. It's only fear that wants to keep us in our comfort zones. Amen, somebody. Fear is the only thing that wants to rob us of what God has promised to us. And so tonight, family, we're going to deal with our message, and that is that your your new season. Everything that God has promised for you is in your new season. But guess what, family? Change is required for you to go into your new season. The new you is the only version of you that's qualified for your new season. The old you is not qualified. Can I get a few people who understand that, who understand that principle? And for some of you, it's revelatory. Can I get a few people to drop that in the chat real quick? My new, the new me must show up. The new me must show up. Make it personal. The new Shanjane must show up. The new Ness Ness must show up. The new Aisha must show up. The new King Charles must show up. The old me is not qualified. The old me has to die in order for the new me to live live. Come on, somebody. I need you to catch that principle in here tonight because that's the only way we can advance. That's the only way we can grow. That's the only way we can maximize what God has promised to maximize the opportunity. The old Sandra Fabiola has to die so the new Sandra Fabiola can live. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on. Come on, Sandra. Yes. Let's get it. Come on, Miss Lenise. Let's get it. Let's get it. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of Jesus. I think this light, I think I I don't have the right kind of lighting on me. Let me see. I think I need to turn this light off. Let's see. Yeah, I think I need to turn this light off. This light is too bright. That light is too bright. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, much better. (laughs) There we go. All right. Hallelujah. All right, family, let's go. We're praying. So, Father, we thank you. We honor you. We bless you tonight. And, God, we come before you tonight in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus. We thank you, first of all, God, for blessing us to see this fifth day of the first month of the new year, 2023. God, and, and for many of us, have already crossed over into the sixth day, which is Friday, God, so I thank you. I thank you for those of us who are still on Thursday and for those of us who have crossed over. Ah, my God, that's a word right there. For those of us who have already crossed over into Friday, the sixth day of 2023. Father, we thank you. We honor you and we bless you today. God, as we come this morning, this evening, we come with open hearts, open minds, and we are ready to receive from you, oh God. Speak Holy Ghost. 
speak holy ghost stir us up tonight god by the power of your word stir us up tonight god by the power of your holy spirit purge out of us everything god that's not like you prune off of us everything that would cause us to be unfruitful and thank you for purifying us transforming us by the renewing of our minds that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god god we surrender our all to you right now god because we want you to be glorified in every area of our lives so holy spirit of god thank you lord god that you would permeate this broadcast with your love permeate this broadcast with your peace and thank you god for giving us the spirit of wisdom and revelation tonight god that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened and that we will be equipped empowered and thoroughly furnished for every good work we love you we bless you and we give you glory tonight sir in the mighty and the matchless name of jesus and everybody who agrees with that prayer tonight said thank god amen amen and amen glory be to the name of jesus hallelujah yes 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 hallelujah come on pastor jackie yes come on miss delena yes brandon santiago happy new year brother good to see you thanks for coming in man of god all right let's go let's get it travel with me in the scripture tonight family of god to the book of joshua that's how the country preachers say it turn with me travel with me quickly to the book of joshua chapter number 24 the book of Joshua chapter number 24 is where we're going to be reading from tonight. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the broadcast. I appreciate you all. Amen. Please go ahead and share the broadcast. Hit that share button. Let's drop some names in the comment section as well. When we drop names into the comment section, family, essentially that tags people and brings people into the broadcast. All right. So please, if you will, go ahead and drop some names in the comment section let's get some folks in on this broadcast people need some help in here tonight all right let's go let's go let's get it hallelujah bless you benjula all right oh my goodness lost my camera there for a second hold on hold on we can't flow without vision Praise God. Let's get this camera back. Okay, there we go. All right, let's get the camera back up. All right, let's go. We're in Joshua chapter number 24, family of God. And let us begin reading. Um, I want to read from, um, I think I want to read from the New Living Translation, the New Lit Translation, NLT. <laughs> yeah. I like the New Living Translation. All right, uh, Joshua chapter number 24, and let us begin reading. Amen. Let us begin reading, family of God, in verse number 19. Joshua chapter 24. Um, well, uh, let me let me let me do this. Joshua chapter 24. Let's begin at verse number 16, and then we'll kind of not skip through the word, but we'll just kind of delve into the, the to the meteor part so we can get to the main subject of this message for tonight. Joshua chapter 24, beginning at verse number 16, the Bible says the people replied, we would never abandon the Lord and serve other gods. For the Lord, our God is the one who rescued us and our ancestors from slavery in the land of Egypt. How many of us have declared that before? God, I'll never, I'll never leave you. I'll never uh, uh, forsake you. God, I'll never go back to the dope house. God, I'll never go back to that relationship that you left, that you delivered me out of. God, if you deliver me out of this situation, oh God, the cops are on my tail and I got dope in the trunk and I got guns in the glove compartment. But God, if you deliver me out of this situation, <laughs> Woo, I can't get nobody to testify right there. I'm sorry. Maybe all y'all been in church your whole life, praise God, and you ain't never lived that kind of life. Amen. Uh, uh, but for some of us, uh, we've been there, done that. Amen. Come on, Miss Dorothy. Come on. Zakia, good to see you. Listen. So now watch this. Sean uh, 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 and and 
and such were some of us, including me. Can I confess my mess in here tonight? <laughs> Guns in the glove compartment, dope in the trunk, and the cops got me pulled over. God, if you get me out of this one. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Look. And we told God that. Listen, just like the children of Israel, it says we will never go back to worshiping false gods because God, you delivered us out of slavery and God, you performed mighty miracles before our very eyes. As we traveled through the wilderness among our enemies, you preserved us. Verse 18, it was the Lord who drove out the Amorites and the other nations living here in the land. So we too will serve the Lord for he alone is our God. Verse 19 of Joshua 24, Joshua warned the people, you are not able to serve the Lord for he is a holy and jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you abandon the Lord and serve other gods, he will turn against you and destroy you even though he has been so good to you. But the people answered Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said, you are a witness to your own decision. You have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, they replied, we are witnesses to what we have said. And then Joshua says, all right, then destroy the idols among you and turn your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, we will serve the Lord our God and we will obey him alone. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day at Shechem, committing them to follow the decrees and regulations of the Lord. Joshua recorded these things in the book of God's instructions. As a reminder of their agreement, he took a huge stone and rolled it beneath the terebinth, the terebinth tree beside the tabernacle of the Lord. And Joshua said, this stone has heard everything the Lord said to us. It will be a witness to testify against you if you go back on your word to God. Listen. Now, here, let's take a pause for the Holy Ghost cause. I want to set this thing up now. Watch this. So God is saying through the, uh, this awesome man, Joshua, who has taken over leadership over the children of Israel because Moses has already passed away. Now, here's what I need you to understand, family of God. Prior to our time, we're in the kingdom where God sets us up, Ness Ness, for elevation and manifestation. God gives us a set of decrees and specific detailed instructions that we must follow in order to be properly prepared for the time of promotion. God does not just catapult us into a place of promotion, purpose, and prosperity without preparation first. And a significant part of the preparation is us going through the process of transformation. This is where God begins to change us from the inside out. I'm always aware when I see people going through the myriad of changes outwardly, when they're changing their hair every month, when they're changing their the different the various different colors of your nails. And ladies, I'm not throwing no shade at nobody. You have every right to change your nails. Most of us men, including myself, we love different colors of nails. But when you're going through radical changes, all these, you got eight different colors. You only got 10 fingers, hamburger, but you got eight different colors on your nails. And some got emeralds on it. Some got sparkly, sparkly and some got the rainbow looking like a pack of Skittles, praise God. And then you got the eyelashes that are growing out, praise God. And 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 then your hair is blonde this month. And then next month is 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 burgundy cellophane. And then next month you look like uh uh you done got hair going all the way down, praise God, to the flow. And the next month you say, I want to be bald and natural. And and there's all these radical dramatic changes that are happening outwardly. And I'm always observing this type of thing, never judging, but I'm observing this type of thing because when I see people making such radical changes on the 
outside, it is a clear indication that God is desiring to do something in you on the inside. But because we don't want to make changes on the inside, we will instead make radical changes on the outside. I can't get nobody to say amen up in here. Listen. And so watch this, Sharita. So now you've got to be careful, great men and women of God, because see, change let me say it like this. It takes courage to change. Bless you, Brandy. Can I get at least 12 people to drop this in the chat? It takes courage to change. It takes courage to change. No, nope, mm -mm. I'm not judging Brandy. No, 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 not at all. This is just my observance, uh, uh, me observing from afar. Uh, uh, <laughs> And here comes my brother, Bishop Dexter Kilpatrick. <laughs> listen, 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 let me listen. And, and lest y'all think that I'm throwing shade at my sisters, I'm an equal opportunity preacher. Let me talk to my brothers. Brothers, I'm checking y'all out that somehow you're going through these radical changes in your life. I'm checking you out that, you know, you uh, in your 40s, you in your 50s, and all of a sudden you want to start wearing big bling, bling, bling uh, diamond earrings. And listen, no shade if that's what you want to do. I'm just wondering if that's what God has called you to do, or are you dealing with some inward insecurities that's requiring you to make external changes instead of internal changes? I'm conscious to uh, my brothers who are doing radical things such as going out buying expensive fancy sports cars all of a sudden when you hit 45, 50 years old, uh, going through the life change. And I'm trying to figure out, well, uh, what is it about you now that wants to get all of this stuff? Bruh, you can barely lean down to get up in the car and you got a hard time getting up out the car but somehow at 45 50 you all of a sudden want to go out and buy these expensive sports cars uh somehow some way you all of a sudden want to date somebody who's just as young as your daughter i'm trying to figure out what in the world is really really going on I submit to you, great men and women of God that God is dealing with a lot of us to make inward changes, but we are not wanting to do that. We're bucking against God. We are downright rebelling against God because it takes courage to change. The old me has to die in order for the new me to live and come forth. Yeah, this is this what really bothers me right here, Bishop. I can't understand it. Brothers wearing skinny jeans. And listen, if you skinty, then it's okay to wear skinty jeans, although I personally don't advise it. But if you're skinny, then you're going to wear them. But I'm tripping off the brothers who ain't skinty, and they got the nerve to be up in some skinny jeans, choking off your circulation. <laughs> okay, let me leave that alone. Let me let me leave that alone. Let me get off of that because somebody going to be writing me a letter in a minute. Bruh, if you can't breathe in your okay, let me leave that. Okay, let me let me keep preaching. Let's go back to the word, shall we? Go back to the word. Look at the word. Look at the word. So the Bible says here, Bishop Kilpatrick, we're in Joshua chapter 24. Joshua was setting them up for a set of decrees and instructions and statutes that they must adhere to prior to the release of of the promises that God has in store for them. They were preparing to enter into the promised land. Watch this now, family of God. So the Bible says here, Joshua sent all the people away to their own homelands. Listen at this. After this, verse 29, after this, Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110. They buried him in the land that he had been allocated at Timnath, <clears throat> at Timnath Sarah in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gash. The people of Israel served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and of the elders who outlived him, those who had personally experienced all that the Lord had done to Israel. Watch this. So the Bible says that all of this had been done and all of these things, Joshua set a standard that these cats would have to live up to. <laughs> But now watch this. I want to bless you here, family of God, because what is imperative to note is that prior to Joshua's death, 
there was a set of instructions. And the reason why Joshua had instructed them so harshly is because there were some things that they did not adhere to prior to this time. Look at this. Let's go back up to the top of Joshua chapter 24. Go back to up to the top. Look at this. The Bible says here, family of God, that Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel together at Shechem, and he called for the elders of the Israelites. Listen at this. He called for them to present themselves before God. And he says to them, family of God, listen, he says, I took your father, uh, 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 God is speaking. He said, I took your father, Abraham, from the other side of the river, led him through all the land of Canaan and multiplied his descendants and gave him Isaac. To Isaac, I gave Jacob and Esau. To Esau, I gave the mountains of Seir to possess. But Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. Also, I sent Moses and Aaron and plagued Egypt according to what I did among them. Afterward, I brought you out. Then I brought your fathers out of Egypt and you came to the sea and the Egyptians pursued you. God is reminding them of all the myriad blessings that he has done for them. Verse eight. And I brought you into the land of the Amorites who dwell on the other side of the Jordan and they fought with you. But I gave them into your hand that you might possess their land and I destroyed them before you. Glory be to God. I submit to you tonight, family of God, that the Lord is calling for us to make a radical change. Listen, can I get a few people to drop this in the chat real quick? Two words, radical obedience, radical obedience, radical obedience. Here is the word of the Lord. Many of us, family of God, we are so comfortable and complacent with where we've been. And again, family, as I stated on New Year's Eve, I stated again on Sunday morning, New Year's Day, that God is really calling us to a deeper place of intimacy and he wants a release to happen for us for fresh oil to be released on our lives. Many of us, Bishop Kilpatrick, are operating in only a modicum of our potential simply because we won't die to the old version of ourselves to become the new version of ourselves so that we can learn how to maximize our potential. But many of us, Pastor Jackie, we are only living in a, in fact, it's not even a small measure of, of the grace of God on our life. I submit to you, Bishop Kilpatrick, that many of us are operating off of the residue of yesterday's anointing. My God in heaven, help me teach this thing, Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. We're too comfortable and complacent, Sharita. And we, because every time we sing and the anointing falls, we think we're okay. Every time we preach and the anointing falls, we think we're okay. We ain't got to die to the flesh because I went for it tonight and it was the bomb. Did you see that church? Church was on fire. Did you see the people shouting? It was on and popping up in the house of God. So I don't have to make any radical changes. And it is the greatest deception on the face of the earth in the kingdom. Listen, it is God's grace on your life that is allowing the anointing to still operate. And it ain't about you. It's about the people of God who are seeking to gain the gift of God that lies within you. It ain't about you at all. All you are is a vessel that God is using because the people are hungry and he doesn't want them to go without. So since you are the vessel that has become available, God says, okay, I'm going to use him tonight. Okay, I'm going to use her tonight. And when you opened up your mouth, even though you were drunk as a skunk, y'all ain't talking back. When you opened up your mouth, even though you were sitting outside beforehand, an hour before the service, smoking on some cigarette weed, y'all ain't talking back. Uh huh. Uh, even though you went and sniffed up a line of cocaine, yeah, I said it because it's happening in the house of God. You did a line of cocaine before you came into the house of God and you went forth. And many people, especially the saints of God from the old school would say, ain't no way God can use such a vessel. Church mother, church elder, I came to let you know something. God has and will use those vessels, not because they're righteous, but the people of God are seeking righteousness and he will use the available vessel that's there for the release. Your life ain't anointed, but watch this Lady Jarnine. it is the people 
who are hungry for God. And so God will allow the residue that's left on your life to be used to bless his people. The reality is that the residue ain't good enough to take you into your new season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blessings, Miss Amber. That's it, Lady J. It is a willing vessel that God requires. A willing vessel, a willing vessel. Don't answer this question if you're not ready. If you are ready, let it be known. Here's the question. How many of us are willing to die to the old version of ourselves? Please do not. Please do not answer this question if you're not ready. How many of us are willing to die to the old version of ourselves? How many of us are willing to die to lust? Come on, somebody. Come on. Healthy sexual people and being a sexual person is a good thing. However, it must only be enjoyed in the confines of the covenant of marriage. How many of us are willing to die to lust? How many of us are willing to die to chasing money. When God tells us, Jesus speaks it himself in Luke 6.33, excuse me, Matthew 6.33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these other things, the money, the relationships that will lead toward marriage, kingdom partnerships, collaborations, All these things shall be added unto you. Come on, Joshua chapter eight, uh, uh, excuse me, Joshua chapter 28 tells us, guess what? All these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. I will cause my blessings to chase you down like an NFL linebacker, praise God. (laughs) I never told you to chase the bag. Why are you caught up with this this idolizing worldly mentality? I didn't tell you to get up and rise and grind. I told you to get up early and pray and seek my face. I will cause you to accomplish more in four hours and make more money in four hours than other people who are working 12 hours chasing the bag and being on the grind. I never told you to get on the grind. I told you to get on your face. Those that seek me early shall find me. Hello? Facebook or YouTubers, are you there? Have y'all shared the broadcast? Come on, hit that share button. Hit that share button. Come on. I only got eight more minutes and I got to go. I only got eight more minutes and I got to go. Let me give you this word. Let's get this work. Let's get this work. So God is saying this. I am blessing those, thank you, Holy Spirit of God. I am blessing those to receive a harvest of blessing on the other side. I am blessing those, thank you, my dear brother. You know, I am always honored, Dr. Dr. Kilpatrick. Love you, brother. Uh, if you're not following my dear brother, Bishop Dexter Kilpatrick, you need to follow this man of God. Good, dear friend of mine, we've been, we've been boys. We've been brothers for over 30 years. I don't know, Dexter, I never asked you if you knew you were going to be preaching. I knew I wasn't going to be preaching. Dexter was a drummer. We were, we've been blessed. We done done live recordings with the Clark sisters, traveled all over the country. Dexter was one of the baddest drummers in the state of California. And I was a choir director. I don't know if Dexter knew he was going to preach him, but I never saw myself preaching. <laughs> and when people was prophesying to me that I was going to preach one day, I would, I would run from them. Bishop, you always want to, you will always want to outline that. Okay. I'm the oldest. So I will admit that I'm the oldest. I'm also the most good looking. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm sure your wife, Lady Bridget will argue that. <laughs> Listen, Oh, Bishop, you said you were going to be a judge. Yeah, me too. I said I was going to be an attorney. Yeah. 
my business law teacher begged my mom to, to let me go to law school. My begged my mom. But my best friend, Eric, he pursued law and now he's a judge. He's a judge in, in, in Riverside, Bishop. So and God called me to preach. So here I am. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so here's the word of the Lord, family of God. Let me give you this word and then we're going to pray. The word of the Lord is this, that there is a requirement. There is a set. Bless you, Jesse Hearns. Good to see you, brother. Love you, man of God. Jesse Hearns in the building. Uh, Sharita, do not be telling people I can sing because I cannot sing. Bishop Kilpatrick can sing. I, I hope you're talking about Bishop. Yeah, Bishop Kilpatrick can sing for sure. Uh, listen, there's a set of prerequisites that must be met, family, in order for us to receive the promises. Here's what I want to share with you. You got to get to the other side. My God, I feel you, Holy Ghost. We got to get to the other side, family. The other side is waiting for you. The other side of where God wants you to be spiritually. The other side of where God wants you to be intellectually. Listen, I'm challenging y'all. Y'all got to commit to at least reading one book a month. Hamburger. Do you know how easy that is? That's 10 pages a day, 10 pages a day. If you commit to reading one book per month, do you know how much vast, do you know the vast array of knowledge you will have? Your mind will be so equipped and you will literally, you will find God corridoring you into opportunities that will help you double and triple your revenue. But you got to read in order to succeed. And if you are called to be a leader, you definitely got to be a reader. You cannot be an effective leader without being a reader. Hello? You got to be, you listen, I don't know. I don't care if you are the leader of the sanitation department. You have to be a reader if you're going to be an effective leader. All right? So here's the last love nugget that I want to drop on you. Here's the last love nugget I want to drop on you, and then we're going to pray. There is a release. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Now, I want you to please hear me carefully. First of all, let me preface what I'm going to say, Bishop, by saying this. Every person who can hear and see what others are not hearing and seeing does not make you a prophet. I'm going to say that again. Every person that has a gift, has an ability that can hear and see what others are not hearing and seeing does not make you a prophet. It does not qualify you to be a seer. Even if you can interpret dreams, that does not make you a prophet. It takes years, not weeks, not months, not going through somebody's eight to 10, to 12 to 16 week training program. It takes years for God to develop a prophet. I will say this to you, and I want you to be encouraged. The fact that God allows you to hear and see things that others are not hearing and seeing, this is God giving you his mind so that you have the ability to foretell the purpose, the mind, the will of God. He wants you to see things beforehand so that you will know how to navigate around certain snares of the enemy so that you are able to be in this position by way of your obedience to God. Let me say it. Let me back that up. By way of your radical obedience to God, that you are prepared and positioned for the season of Kairos moments. My God, thank you, Holy Ghost. Somebody drop this in the chat real quick. Accelerate. Acceleration is for me. Acceleration is for me. Acceleration is for me. Oh my God, Apostle G, what in the world is a Kairos moment? I'm glad you asked. A Kairos moment, family. Kairos, K-A-I-R-O-S, is a supernatural segment of time. It is the opposite of chronos, where we get our word chronology, second by second, minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day. The chronological order of time is something that is beyond our control. That is the segment of time that we are 
operate in in the natural realm. In the supernatural realm, God blesses us to operate by Kairos. He causes things to be accelerated on our behalf, Benjula. But the only way that you can get to a place of experiencing Kairos moments, you've got to be fully surrendered to God. You cannot be tipping toe through the tulips, straddling the fence, having one foot in the will of God and one foot out of the will of God in the world. Uh Uh-oh, we got to go here. Watch this, Mr. Kwanda. You cannot still be entertaining your sex partner and believing God for a purpose partner. Oops, did the man God go there at one o'clock in the morning? I sure did. Listen, we're going to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth up in here tonight. Listen, you've got to be fully devoted to God. So this is why Joshua gives the children of Israel a series of statutes, decrees, and specific detailed instructions that they must follow because he says, I do not want you to get caught up in idolatry. I do not want you to get caught up in your spirit of rebellion. The Bible says, ladies and gentlemen, that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. The sin of witchcraft. So what you must not do is allow yourself to put other things and other people ahead of the will of God. Because watch this, idolatry can also be something that you do in terms of who you're connected to in relationship. Uh Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. Your child can be an idol. Your spouse can become an idol. Anything or anyone that you put ahead of God, anything or anyone that you compromise the will of God, compromise the call of God, compromise the word of God in order to accommodate someone else, that's idolatry. Love you mean it. Love you mean it. So God is saying, I'm ready to accelerate you. But first, before I accelerate you, I've got to know that I can trust you with acceleration. I've got to know I can trust you with harvest. You can't come to me and say, God, I will tithe and I'll start giving back to you and I'll start sowing when I make more money. God is saying, no, boo, it don't work like that. If you don't sow in your twos and fews, you will not sow consistently, faithfully when you get more than twos and fews. If you are not faithful as a hundred there, you will not be faithful as a thousand there and you won't be faithful as a millionaire. Jesus says that when you are faithful over a few things, I'll make you rulers over much. Uh Uh-oh, here we go. Watch this, Sharita. If you are not faithful to me in your singleness and keeping yourself out of lustful activities, you won't be faithful in your marriage. Not sipping on gin and juice, but sipping on coffee. Watch this, Benjula. Ain't no way. Listen, Shanjane, I know this is hurtful, but I got to give us the whole truth in here. I'm preaching to myself. Listen, there ain't no way you're going to commit adultery against God being single, but you're going to be faithful to a human partner. Ain't no way you're going to cheat on God and have sex partners. But then when you get connected to your purpose partner, all of a sudden you're going to be pure. Come on, y'all. The math ain't mathing. You know that don't add up. Huh? Come on, Bishop. (laughs) The Jews had to have proof that they had kept themselves. (laughs) Listen, ladies, if the brother says, I want to be devoted to you, but I'm a man and I have needs. So I respect the fact that you don't want to have sex with me, but every now and then I'm going to have to go have sex somewhere else. But I still want us to get married, though. I still want to be devoted to you. Boo, 
if he's violating the purity of your covenant while y'all dating and when y'all engaged, please don't think that behavior is going to somehow change when you get married. It's going to get worse when you're married. He's going to start asking you for threesomes. Y'all ain't talking back. Y'all ain't talking back. Y'all ain't talking back. Bruh, 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 bruh. Let me help you in here tonight. Bruh, if she goes days on end and she ain't talking to you, trust me, she hollering at somebody else. Now you decided that you're going to keep yourself pure and keep her pure. Trust me, she getting busy with somebody else. She's not your purpose partner, brother. She for the streets. <laughs> Y'all don't like this kind of preaching. Y'all don't like this kind of preaching. She for the streets, bruh, bruh. Thank you, Delana. You are awesome. Please do not think that somehow, some way, that this person that you are currently with who is not fully devoted to God, that all of a sudden when y'all get married, y'all gonna have this wonderful godly relationship that's gonna be an example for the kingdom. Oh my God, God told us that we're gonna do like marriage ministry and we're gonna totally like be together. And like God showed me in a vision that we're gonna like be on television and everything because God said that we're pure and we're gonna be like anointed and we're gonna be like an anointed couple for the kingdom. Okay, <laughs> yeah, right. Y'all ain't living holy together in singleness. It won't happen in marriage. No, for real though, Dr. G. Like God showed it to me. You know what I'm saying? He showed it to me in a vision. You know what I'm saying? Like I saw it. Like, like, like me and my wifey. You know what I'm saying? Like we gonna be like, we gonna be like street. And we're going to be in the church. You know what I'm saying? Like street preachers. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, right? Like, yeah, we're going to be getting it in. We're going to be going to the dope houses and everything. Are y'all, okay, but y'all smoking dope right now and drinking. So all of a sudden, y'all going to shift and get folks in the dope house saved when right now in y'all singleness, you smoking dope. I'm just trying to figure out where do we draw the line of demarcation and when do we, when do we start living holy? How are we going to get folk delivered? If we go into the very place that needs deliverance for, but see, see, I, I smoking this to get high, Dr. G, you know what I'm saying? I'm smoking this for my glaucoma, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? I got that glaucoma, you know what I'm saying? So, I, so that's the only reason why I'm smoking right now, you know what I'm saying? For my glaucoma situation and these migraines, you know what I'm saying? These migraines, okay? Okay, I'm trying to figure out when we're going to get delivered. I'm just trying to figure out when when we're going to get delivered. Scripture in Jeremiah, Bishop Kilpatrick tells us the harvest is past and summer is ended and we are still not saved. I'm just trying to figure out when we're going to get delivered. Yeah, Ness Ness, that's the question. Who you ministering to, bro? <laughs> Who you ministering to? Father, we thank you. We bless you and honor you tonight for your word. Father, we come tonight, God, because we desperately, we desperately want to honor you with our very lives, God. We are desperate to honor you. We are desperate to bring you glory. God, many of us have fallen short, Lord God, even this week the first week of the new year. But God, we don't want to continue going down the same path that has led us far from you instead of drawing us closer to you. So Father, forgive us tonight in the name of Jesus. My God in heaven, 
Forgive us tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. 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 <sighs> My God in heaven. I don't know why. Father, we repent, Lord God, of all sin that we've committed against you. We repent, Lord God, of the sins we've committed against you in our thoughts. We repent, Lord God, of the sins we've committed against you with our words. Some of us have constantly spoken negative words, toxic, hurtful, destructive words over ourselves and to others. God, forgive us, God, because your word declares, God, that we are to let our words be few and seasoned with grace. Help us, God, to live by the principle that grandmama taught us, that if we can't say anything good, we won't say anything at all. Rather than slander our brother and our sister, if we can't speak life, we will not speak death. If we can't say words, speak words that will edify and build up, we will not speak words that will destroy and tear down. Forgive us, oh God. Cleanse us, God. Create in us, oh God, a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, wash us in your blood, Lord Jesus. Purify our hearts, God. Purify our minds, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, God, I love you, Jesus. Yes, God, I love you, Jesus. Miss Ness Ness, I want to pray for you. Dorothy Evans, I want to pray for you. My dear brother, Bishop Kilpatrick, I want to pray for you. Benjula, I want to pray for you. Delena, I want to pray for you. You all, please help me. Called out those names as it came to me. And if you give me permission, please let me know that you give me permission. I will not pray. I will not just usurp authority and take it upon myself to pray for you without permission. I have too much respect for God and too much respect for God's people to do that. And even I know most of you trust me. Um, it is always appropriate. It's always proper to ask for permission, nevertheless, especially to my brother, Bishop Kilpatrick. Even though I'm his older big brother, I still respect the call of God on his life and I honor him and his wife. And so I will respectfully ask the man of God for permission. Let me take a second here to teach on honor real quick. This is something that is sorely missing in the body of Christ. Okay, please pray for Lady Bridget as well. Okay, amen, I got you. Yes, I'll be honored to. All right, Delena, uh, Benjula, put uh, put um, Bishop Kilpatrick and Lady Bridget. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Lady Felicia. Let me teach on honor real quick. Give me, give me, give me two minutes just to teach on honor real quick. Sorely missing in the body of Christ is honor. I don't know where things shifted because I know in my generation, uh, when Bishop Kilpatrick and I were growing up, there was never ever a question that came to our minds that we would challenge our pastor's authority or that we would challenge any elder or that we would challenge even the church mothers or the deacons. Watch this. Even after I became a licensed minister in the Church of God in Christ, the deacons who were senior to me in age, men who were old enough to be my father, even though I outranked them now spiritually in terms of position, 
I, they are still my elders. And so I'm going to honor them as elders because the Bible says we are to honor the older women as mothers and honor the younger women as sisters. And the same thing we do in, with men. The brothers who are of our age, of our peer group, they are brothers. And the men who are senior to them, we treat them as fathers or at the very least as uncles. But somehow this thing has crept into the church the world in general, but I'm specifically talking about the church, that we feel like we don't have to honor people. We don't feel like we don't have to respect people who are senior to us in age and in rank. Listen, and you don't get to respect people just because you admire someone who's greater than you, just because they're on television or they have hundreds of thousands of followers. Oh, I respect them because I like them. We don't get to choose that. The Bible says that we are to esteem others Across the board, we are to esteem others more highly than we esteem ourselves. Come on, somebody. And when we fail to do so, family of God, I love how the great Dr. Mike Murdoch says it like this, that wherever you fail to honor, whatever you choose to, uh, to, to, to dishonor or disrespect is the very place where you lose favor. So I'm encouraging you, all of you wonderful up and coming anointed young preachers, please don't dishonor older people just because you think you know more than them, just because you're being used mightily of God. You may be traveling more than them. You may have more money than them, more followers than them. Listen, you're going to soon find out that it takes not just a gift, not just an education, but it takes years of living for the gift of God in you to be fortified, seasoned, and matured. You're going to learn. But in the meantime, I implore you in Jesus' name, please don't dishonor our elders. Please don't dishonor the men and women of God. If you see them saying something wrong, doing something wrong, the Bible says love covers a multitude of faults. No, we don't sweep stuff under the carpet and pretend like it didn't happen. But what we also don't do is bring an accusation against an elder. The Bible says we ought to go to our brother in secret, not put them on blast on social media. What in the world did you get that from? There's no place in the scripture where you can qualify that behavior. And you're expecting that people are going to be drawn to the gift of God and you like you're somehow something special. Trust me, you just the flavor of the month. You will soon find out you're going to fall from grace. You're going to fall from the place of favor and you're going to need the brethren to love you and restore you. Galatians chapter six, verse one, brethren, if a man or a woman be overtaken in a fault, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted, lest you also grow weak and fall yourself. So let us never dishonor a brother or a sister. Let us never dishonor a seasoned mother, a seasoned father in the faith. Let us always honor. Let us always honor. I know we see some of our elders doing some stuff. Love them and pray for them. If we can pray for a young man who we don't even know, Damar Hamlet, and thank God, God is miraculously bringing him back. Amen. He's not able to talk yet, but he is communicating. He's writing notes. He is his, he is neurologically sound, so he didn't suffer any brain damage. Amen. And the doctors have said that he's making remarkable progress. So we give God all the glory for Damar Hamlet, football player that plays for the Buffalo Bills. Amen. We give God all the glory for his miraculous recovery in Jesus name. But if we can all pray for that young man, we can pray for our elders. Amen, somebody. All right. Bless you, Donna B. I see you. All right, let's go. I'm praying. I had to share that and please forgive me. I know I'm prolonging the time, but I had to share that because it is something that we must not forget. Amen. 
And let me say this while I'm there on the, on the way of honor. Part of honoring our elders and honoring and esteeming each other is how we address each other. Now, those of you that know me know I'm one of the most accessible leaders anywhere. All right. Listen, if you address me, if you send me a message, please don't start off the message by saying, hey, my name is not hey. All right. I don't care how cool we are, how tight we are. My sister, my blood sister, I only got one biological sibling. My own blood sister doesn't address me as hey. All right. And I don't address her as hey. My name is not hey. I have a name. So respect me. If you send me a message and it starts off with, hey, I, prob I promise you, I'm going to put you on never mind. I'm just going to ignore your message because it says to me that you don't respect me enough to address me properly. Good morning, Dr. G. Good morning, Apostle. Good morning. You don't even have to address me by no title at all. I'm just Gerald. You can just call me, hey, G. Hey, Gerald. Hey, I got a da 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 Now, if you really love me and honor me, then you'll address me as such. But I don't require that. I'm cool. I'm cool as the other side, but never, ever, 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 ever address me by, hey, because you're not going to get a response from me. Somebody sent me a message the other day, someone I count as a friend. I saw them, Bishop, addressing other people in the chain. I saw them addressing other people. Hey, Bishop Kilpatrick. Hey, Miss Shanjanae. Hey, Miss Leah, I saw them addressing other people very respectfully. And then when they came to me, I'm like, hey, can you be here da -da 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 -da, at 745? And guess what? I put them on never mind. I didn't even respond to their message. Because what you're not going to do, see, there's a new G in 2023. See, before, because I'm such a servant leader, I, I would love to just help and help. And so even if they did not honor me and address me properly, Miss Leah, with a proper response, then I would have still went on and helped them. Mm -mm. Nope. I'm doing something for free and you can't even address me properly by saying, hey, man of God. Hey, G, can you do that? Da, 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 da. Watch this. I'm OK with hey, just as long as it's my name is behind it. But when you just say, hey, you're throwing out something randomly. Whereas we used to say when we were kids, Bishop, hey, it's for horses. So you can't address me as hey, I promise you. If I see hey in my inbox, if I see hey in an email and my name is not following it. I know you're not honoring me. You're not respecting me. So therefore, I'm not going to give dignity to your ignorance by responding to it. Love you mean it. Because it takes three seconds to type somebody's name in. No, Bishop, I'm not going to go all the way with it. I'm not going to block them. I'm just not going to respond to them. It's just that simple. Some girl who was 28 years old, you know, I got a, I got a, I got a, I got a child who's 27. Some child who's 28 years old. First of all, she thought I was younger than I, than I, than I look. So she thought I was young. She thought I was somewhere in my thirties and her age. So she came at me in that way. Hey, um, I enjoy what I heard you saying in that relationship room. Da, 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 da. I'm in the Atlanta area. Would you be open to a coffee date? First of all, my name is not Hey. So I politely responded to her and said, thank you. I'm really flattered that you would think that. I said, I'm probably a little bit too old for you. And then I said, and by the way, where I'm from, we don't address each other as Hey. Oh, well, I'm from the South. That's how we talk to each other. I said, oh, well, I don't talk like that. And then she went on to give me this long soliloquy on why she talks to people. And I was, I didn't even respond back to her. I was just, that was, I was done. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate you. I did not see that Sharita, but thank you for putting that back in. I will cover that as well. All right, let me get to praying. I got a lot of ground to cover. Um, let me take this order right here. I want to. I want to pray in this order right here. Um, I'm going to take Bishop Kilpatrick and Lady Bridget first. Then I'm going to take Nessness next. And then. Um, 
you all put the other names back up for me and I will I will pray accordingly. So I want to pray for Bishop Kilpatrick and Lady Bridget first. All right. Um, for those of you that are here in the broadcast, if you've been blessed by the word that you've heard tonight, you're certainly welcome to sow. Amen. Um, some of you may not have had a chance to sow. You may not have had a chance to give your first fruit offering for the new year. What is the first fruit offering of the new year? Well, whenever we come into the new year, we always want to bring God a special gift. So what we do and what I've been doing consistently, glory be to God, is sowing into ministry, sowing into men and women of God that I believe have been sent by God and they have spoken into my life. And so if you've been blessed by the word that you've heard, or if you consider me your online pastor, if you consider me one of your spiritual leaders that you glean from and that you can grow by, then I am honored to be of service to you. Amen. Um, I'm honored to pray for you. I'm honored to speak to you, to counsel with you, whatever you need. I am here to be of service to you. Everybody that's here in this broadcast that knows me knows that I am very accessible. Yes, I am a very busy man. Absolutely. But I'm also very accessible as well. All right. Um, okay, Bishop Kilpatrick. Um, so um, if you would like to sow, this ministry is fertile ground. Um, the cash app is right there floating across the screen. It's dollar sign I am G Hightower. Um, you can also sow by way of PayPal, GTH Global Ministries, and you can also sow by way of Zelle as well. Amen. Um, let me do this because I keep getting notes from people saying, oh, it's going too fast. I can't see it. Where is it? Where is it? So let me do this. I always put it across the screen, but um, I'll put it up right here. Although it's quite distractionary to me, but I'll put it up so everybody can see it. Those are the ways that you can sow family. Cash app, PayPal, and Zelle. Amen. Now, what we've been doing as a ministry family, we've been sowing with the number eight attached to it. Eight represents new beginnings. So those of you that can tonight, uh, I want you to just go ahead and sow whatever God tells you to sow. But I'm encouraging you to at least try to sow a $28 seed, a $28 seed if you can. If you can sow a $28 seed, there's some of you who can do better than that. Some of you can sow 58. Some of you can sow 108. There's several people in this broadcast who's connected to this ministry who's sowing 88, 88. Amen. And all kind of wonderful things have been happening for them. And we give God all the glory. Again, eight, according to biblical numerology, represents new beginnings. So if you are believing God for a new beginning, this is a good place for you to sow fertile ground and honor the Lord with your giving. The Bible says, family of God, in Colossians chapter three, whatsoever you do in word or deed, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men, knowing that from the Lord you shall receive your reward. Amen. And I promise you, family, when it comes to giving, that principle works. Amen. All right, let's go. I got to sow for Bishop. I got to pray for Bishop and Lady Bridget. So, Father, I thank you. <clears throat> I honor you for my dear friend and brother, Bishop Dexter Kilpatrick, and for his awesome wife, Lady Bridget. I pray tonight for their strength, God. God, as they enter into this new year, into this new season of their life and ministry, I thank you for their lives. Yes, God. Oh, Shabbat. My God. Bishop, I hope you are holding your wife's hand. Man of God, I hope you are holding your wife's hand. And I'm going to anoint my hands with oil as I pray for you right now. Glory be to God. Yes, God, I thank you. Yes, God. I'm going to anoint my hands with oil right now, Bishop Lady Bridget, because there is fresh oil coming upon your ministry in Jesus name. Yes, God. There's a fresh release of oil. Yes, God. Hoda Bashia. A fresh release of oil, fresh oil. Monday they'll show. Yes, God. Fresh wind, fresh oil. Yes, God. Hoda Basha. Yes, God. Bishop, what the Spirit of God has instructed and is yet instructing you to do, and what He's instructing you to build. Do not worry, great man of God, about where the money is going to come from. That is not your job. Your job is to execute the plans. First of all, be clear in writing out the vision fully. Bishop, don't be intimidated by a lack of support. 
Do not be intimidated by a lack of resources. You know this very well, man of God, that wherever God gives a man or a woman a vision, he always sends the provision. The provision is God's job and provision falls under uh, uh, what falls under the umbrella of provision is personnel, proceeds and other resources, equipment, materials, building, whatever it is that God has told you to do, man of God, simply go forth. And here's the here's the mindset, Bishop. Here, here's the mindset. Man of God, go forth as if all the money you need is in the bank. You've got to have that level of faith, Bishop. And Lady Bridget, your job is to undergird your husband in prayer. And I know you do this well, great woman of God, but in this season, it's going to require a little bit more perseverance in prayer, Lady Bridget, a little bit more perseverance in prayer because your husband is under a tremendous amount of pressure. And oftentimes people who we think is in our corner to support us are secretly working against us. Oh, Rashaba. So be careful, man of God, with whom you share your vision with and where you share your vision. You and Lady Bridget have to operate as stealth bombers in this season. This is not the season to get overly excited and be sharing with people prior to to manifestation. Mm -mm. Nope. We're going to let our fruit speak for itself. We're not going to talk prematurely because sometimes when we talk prematurely, even out of excitement and wanting to share the work of God, sharing the vision of God, we can talk prematurely and it invites unnecessary attacks. Please hear me. This part of the word is for all visionaries. I'm specifically talking to Bishop and Lady Bridget, but every person can apply this principle. Those of you that are visionaries and builders. Oftentimes when we get excited and we speak prematurely, it invites unnecessary attack. You're just not aware of the people who are in opposi uh, opposition against you. You're just not aware of it. Because just because you love to support others doesn't mean that others are loving to support you. So, Father, I thank you. Mandoro shokorabasiya. Lady Bridget, I hear the spirit of God saying it's time to get back in the studio. Yes, you are not too old, Lady Bridget. Because you've lived a life of holiness, God has preserved you. You've got to get back in the studio, woman of God. The, this season is about praying and consecrating before God so you can find the right producer. And Bishop, you have to trust your wife to make the right decisions. Yes, you are her covering. Yes, you are overseeing. But man of God, you're going to have to give her the liberty to flow. You have to give her the liberty to flow because your wife can't fully spread her wings if you're holding on too tight, Bishop. Okay, you're going to have to give her the liberty to flow. Together, you both pray about the producer and then you start vetting each producer. You start vetting the right musicians. And then, Bishop, you trust your wife to get in that studio and go to work. In Jesus' name. Glory to the name of Jesus. Glory to the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Father. I speak blessing over Bishop and Lady Bridget in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God, for giving the man of God everything he needs to succeed in what you have called him to build in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy God. I bless you. I honor you and I give you glory in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Lady Bridget, because you have not focused on trying to be a stellar award winner, because you have not focused on trying to be a Dove Award winner, God is going to place you in arenas where people will take note of you because of the purity of your heart, because of the purity of your worship, because of your passionate desire to honor him with your gift. 
in Jesus' name. Now, let me share this with you, Lady Bridget. The reason why producers are often looking for younger artists and don't want to work with artists that's over 30, 35 is because the older the artist becomes, the less likely they are open to change. I'm going to say that again. That's going to deliver somebody tonight. The older an artist becomes, the less likely they are willing to change. And those of us who refuse to change cannot grow. Just because you are a wonderful singer and you used to tear the house down back in the day does not mean you will be just as effective today. So you have to be open to change. You have to be open to new things. You have to be open to new styles. You have to be willing to take on training exercises to help you breathe better, to hold your pitch, to sustain that note. What separates you from everybody else is the training, the time that you put in in training. Still to this day, we have yet to have a singer anywhere that can match the vocal skill that our dear brother, my big brother, the late, great Pastor Daryl Coley, we have yet to have a singer that can match the level of skill. I'm not talking about great singing. I'm not talking about great runs, even though I ain't heard nobody better him than in, in that area either. I'm talking about the totality of vocal quality. I'm talking about sustained breath that he can hold the note for almost 60 seconds, one breath, one note, and the pitch doesn't waver at all. I'm talking about excellent enunciation and articulation and anointed. We've yet, and Pastor Daryl Coley has been, he passed away seven years ago, eight years ago. And yet we have seen, I have not seen a singer yet that can match him, yet. Because, and it's not that the skill isn't there. We got a lot of super talented, skilled singers. They're just not willing to put in that work to do the little things like breath control, pitch, enunciation. All right, let's go. So, Father, I thank you for Bishop and Lady Bridget. I thank you for their lives. I speak blessings over their lives. Thank you for kingdom collaborations. Thank you, Lord, for sending them anointed producers, sanctified songwriters and musicians who will be devoted to the work that you have given this great woman of God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and it is so. Hallelujah. All right. Um, Who's next? Who did I have next? Are y'all helping me? Bless you, Providence Tawana. Who did I have next? I think I saw some names. Oh, Ness Ness. Okay. I got Ness Ness, Dorothy, Benjula, and Delana. Okay, good. Okay. Ness Ness, are you still here, dear? Okay, there's Ness Ness. All right, so Father, I thank you for Ness Ness in Jesus' name. I thank you for her life. Thank you, Father, for the call that you placed on her life, God. Um, wow, thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Yeah. Oof. Yes, God. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Mendede sho taradasi. Mendede katoro sho. Ooh, shebasi. Yes, God, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Mendede basi toro sho taradasi. Yes, God, I love you, Jesus. Yes, God, I love you, Jesus. Yes, God, I love you, Jesus. Hey, Rosh Hashanah. Yindere kotoroso. Shindere basia. Yindere desho. Yes, God, I love you, Jesus. 
Mendele Bashia. Yes, God, I love you, Jesus. God, I thank you for Delena. Uh, I thank you for Nesnes. Um, Nesnes, I want to speak this into your life. Delena, I'm praying for you next, Delena. Um, Nesnes, here is the word of the Lord. Um, hmm. Separation and sanctification will prepare you for elevation. Nesnes, you're supposed to be way further ahead than all the people in your circle. And you have to become comfortable with this, Nesnes. I know it's easier to assimilate with the crowd and not saying that you hang out with a crowd of people. I don't discern that you hang out with a crowd of people, but even our interactions with people on social media uh, can limit our growth because God has called you, Ness Ness, to accelerated growth, accelerated growth, accelerated growth, accelerated growth. And the rapidity of your obedience is what's going to catapult you into that season of acceleration. In other words, the quicker you embrace the call and the quicker you come into this time of separation and sanctification, that is going to be your launching pad for your time of acceleration. People are going to look at you, Ness Ness, six months from now, and they're going to say, dang, she blew up overnight. The reality is, is that you haven't blown up overnight. You've been in the process of blowing up for quite some time. It's going to look like you blew up overnight. Separation and sanctification prepares you for elevation, Ness Ness. I need you to understand that there's a prophetic anointing on your life, so you've got to be careful of what you say. Guard the words that come out of your mouth. Three places that we have to constantly guard. We have to guard our ear gates, we have to guard our eye gates, and we have to guard our mouth. What comes out of the mouth, Jesus says, it is not what goes into a man that defiles him. It's what comes out of a man that defiles him. We defile ourselves. We defile the very temple of God. Watch this. Hear this now. We defile the very temple of God and we defile the call of God on our life by what comes out of our mouth. I feel a lot of ways, Prophetess Tawana, about a lot of stuff. I can't be getting on social media calling people the N-word just because I feel some type of way when people are acting ignorant. And watch this. I'm intelligent enough to understand the history of the word N-I-G-G-E-R. It is not relegated to black people, even though black folks have taken it on like it's some culturally cool thing to call each other. But the N-word defined is an ignorant, stupid person, which could be anybody. So people in the Middle East, they refer to each other by that word. Yeah. People in the Middle East, they call each other a sand in. You are sand in. <laughs> Yeah. So I feel a lot of ways about a lot of stuff. I don't use that word. I'll never speak that word publicly because it is such a defiling word. It's horrible. My point, Ness Ness, is we have to be careful with what we say because, because of the prophetic anointing on your life, you always want people to be prepared to receive sweet water coming from your fountain and not bitter water. So Father, I thank you for my dear sister Nesnes. I bless you for her life. I thank you, Father, that you have purified her, anointed her, and called her for such a time as this. Thank you for raising her up. Thank you for strengthening her, God. And thank you for bringing her into this season of sanctification, separation, 
and preparing her for elevation. We love you, God. We bless you for her life, being fully devoted to you in Jesus' name. Yes, God, give her the spirit of wisdom and revelation. In Jesus' name, we thank you. We bless you. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. Um, who do I have next? Miss Delena. So, Father, I thank you for Miss Delena. <clears throat> I bless you for Delena's life. Hallelujah. Um, uh, I'm sorry. I know some people gave already. And please forgive me. I know some of you gave already. And um, I apologize for uh, overlooking anybody. Um, I always want to acknowledge people who give. I think it's always important to do that. Amen. Um, so abundant blessings to you. Uh, thank you, Donna B. Thank you, Miss Sharita. Abundant blessings to you. Thank you so much. Glory be to God. Um, thank you to my dear friend, Pastor Carla. God bless you. Uh, thank you, Miss Lakeisha. God bless you. Uh, abundant blessings to you as well. Glory be to God. Uh, thank you, Miss Yvette. Abundant blessings to you, great woman of God. Thank you, Tisha Marie. Abundant blessings to you. Amen. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, Miss Clarice. Thank you, uh, Brother Daryl. Abundant blessings to you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Carolette. Thank you, Miss Tammy. Abundant blessings to you. Thank you, Miss Kim. Abundant blessings to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, those of you that can sow, amen. Please just honor the Lord. Uh, if you can, sow a seed of $28 tonight. If you can't do that, just sow a seed of $8 or $18. The reason why we use the number eight, because again, eight, according to biblical numerology, represents new beginnings. Amen. And if you are believing God, you're entering into a new season of your life, not just a new year, because God is not limited to the Gregorian calendar. All right. God operates outside of time. The reality is most of us entered into our new year in October. Amen. But if you are in a new season, you're in a season of transition, you're believing God for a new job, promotion on your job, new business opportunity, new relationships. If you're believing God to enter into your new season, let's sow a seed that help prepares us, that opens up a door of harvest. Because here's what Jesus said in Luke 638, that when we give, it shall be given back to us. Good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over, God causes men, plural, to give back into our bosom. Amen, somebody. So thank God for those of you who have given and for those of you that will give, amen, tonight in Jesus' name. All right, bless the Lord. Um, so Father, I thank you for Mr. Lena. I bless you for her life. I thank you, Father, for this season of open doors. Wow. Bless your name, Jesus. Yeah. Um, wow. Ms. Delena, um, I want you to, I want you to uh, schedule a call with me. Um, there's some of this word that I, I don't want to release publicly because it's very personal. Um, it is good. I don't want you to be concerned. It is good. But some of it is personal. And I want to share this with you in private. And if you choose to share it as a testimonial, you certainly can. Um, but here's part of the word that I will speak into your life in Jesus name on this sixth day of the new year at 129 in the morning, Eastern time. Here's the word of the Lord for you, Miss Delena. Uh, not only are you entering into a new season, God is saying that I'm preparing you to move to a new territory. I'm preparing you to move to a new territory. My daughter, please don't worry about anything. I've always supplied every need for you and I will continue to supply every need for you. I want you to gather your things and prepare to move and move as if I've already done it because it's already established in the heavens. I shall bring it to pass on the earth. I shall prepare your family. You will not have to worry. I will take care of them. I will provide for them and I will provide for you. Only get ready now, only prepare now and prepare and move by faith. My God in heaven, I thank you. Yes, God, I bless you. 
Wow, glory be to the name of Jesus. Glory be to the name of Jesus. New territory, new territory. So Father, I thank you for your daughter. I thank you for your daughter. Rosha Tarabashaya. Ye Kandara Sho. Yeah, that's it, Bishop. Yendera Bosho Kondorosho. Rusha Basia. Yendere Shekatoso. God, I thank you. My God in heaven, I bless you. Yes, God. I honor you for the woman of God. I thank you for her life. I thank you for open doors of favor, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, your word declares in Philippians 4:19, my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you for supplying every need. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are the Lord God that always provides. You are the Lord God that always makes a way out of no way. Thank you, Father, for honoring and blessing your daughter and for open doors of favor in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of Jesus. My God in heaven, wow. <laughs> to God be the glory. To God be all the glory. To God be all the glory. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's see, my brother Bishop. Bishop August Smith and Lady Jessica Smith are watching to pray for them. Okay. Amen. Um, I will do that, Bishop. Can you give me, or can they give me, Bishop uh, Smith, Lady Jessica Smith, God bless you. Uh, I'll be honored to pray for you. Um, if there is, is there any specific prayer requests? If so, I will speak to that. And if not, I'll just go ahead and pray uh, a general prayer. Amen. And whatever the Lord gives me, I will speak that. Um, I want to know, though, if there's a specific need. Sharita, let me know if you're still here, Sharita. I will definitely pray for your son. I saw that in the chat you dropped in something uh, about gangs are trying to recruit your son or your son is being tempted to get involved in gang violence. Uh, let me know. Um, and I will definitely pray, Sharita, if you're still here. Um, that devil is a lie. That devil is a lie. Gangs are not going to take any more of our sons in Jesus name. Okay, Sharita. All right. Uh, Benjula, let me know if you're still here, Benjula. I'm going to, Benjula, I'm going to pray for you next, but I want to pray for, uh, let's see, I think I have, um, okay, got you, Bishop Smith. Amen. Thank you, sir. All right. Honored to pray for you and your wife. Amen. So, Father, I thank you for this great man of God, Bishop August Smith and his wife, Lady Jessica. I thank you for their lives, oh God. I bless you, Lord God, for the call that you placed on their life. And Father, I pray in Jesus' name. God, thank you for, um, hmm, wow, thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Ooh. Yes, God. Wow, thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Oh, yes, God, I thank you. Yes, God, I thank you. Yes, God, I thank you. Wow, bless your name, Jesus. Wow, thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Mm. Wow, bless your name, Jesus. God, I stand in the gap, Lord God, for Bishop Smith, Lady Smith, right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for not only this new year, this new season, uh, Bishop Smith, here is the word of the Lord for you and Lady Lady Smith. I just heard these two words for you, man of God. New direction. New direction. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Yes, God. Bishop, I will be very honest with you, man of God, and say that I've never read the book by Bishop T.D. Jakes, Reposition. I've never read that book. I heard that it was good. I am a fan of Bishop Jakes' writing, um, especially back in the day when he was really writing and not other folks writing for him. Yeah, I said it. And I love Bishop Jakes. And his daughter, Cora Jakes, is a very good friend of mine. So I ain't putting no slander on the man of God. But those of us who love good writing, we can tell the difference between the person writing and others writing in their voice. 
there is a difference. Amen, somebody. Benjamin, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but I hear this concerning you, Bishop Smith, that God is bringing you and your wife, Lady Jessica, into taking you in a new direction. And so I brought up the book Repositioning because this is not, Bishop Smith, as if you've gotten out the will of God. No, not at all. But it is, man of God, a season where God is shifting you. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God, and taking you in a new direction. Thank you, Spirit of God. This is not only a new direction for you ministerially. This is a new direction for you professionally. This is a new direction for you financially. And it's going to be a blessing for you, Bishop and Lady Jessica, for you relationally. New direction, new direction, new direction, new direction, new direction. This is what I hear the Spirit of God saying, Bishop. And, and hear this, man of God. The new direction is all about uh, this phenomenal shift that God is bringing into your life. Now, we hear that word all the time, Bishop, and I know you've heard this word and you probably even preached it yourself, uh, the word shift. I've been hearing it consistently since about 2008. Shift, shift, been hearing it all over the world from God's prophetic voices. The word shift, and I wanna really define this and really make it simple uh, because as a great Ralph Waldo Emerson said, to be simple is to be great. So I love simplicity. Here is what God is speaking to all of us when he talks about a shift. The shift means that we first embrace a new level of responsibility so that God can release a greater weight of his glory. There's no need for a greater weight of glory until and unless we take on a greater level of responsibility. So the shift and moving in a new direction brings the greater release of God's glory, brings the greater release of God's favor and positions us or repositions us for a new move of God to operate in our lives. Bishop Smith, this is the word of the Lord for you and Lady Jessica Smith. New direction. Prepare for the shift, man of God. Prepare to shift. Prepare to shift. I submit to you, Bishop, and I say this to you in love, dear brother, uh, that many people, including some family members, are not going to like the new direction. Don't matter. Folk didn't like the fact that Abram and Sarai had to leave their daddy's house. We don't see it chronicled in scripture, but I guarantee you, if Abram had a conversation with his daddy, the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 12 that God speaks to Abram and the New Living Translation says it like this, Bishop Kilpatrick. He says, get up and get out of your father's house, separate yourself from your family and your relatives. I want you to leave your cousins and your friends behind. Separate yourself from your family and your relatives. Watch this. And he said, I'm taking you to a new place. And then the Bible says, as we see it in Hebrews chapter five, the Bible says, and Abraham went not knowing where he was going. Because God never reveals the totality of his purpose beforehand. The revealing of the will of God comes as we go, as we move forward in faith. Because to get the whole plan beforehand would mean that we're able to operate based on what we see and not by faith. Well, the Bible tells us that we walk by faith and not by sight. Shout out to the late, great Dr. Fred K.C. Price. We walk by faith and not by sight, right? So therefore, Bishop Smith, God has downloaded a portion of the vision, but now he is shifting you. He's repositioning you to move in a new direction. And as you go, great man of God, as you and Lady Jessica go forward, he will reveal the plan. He will reveal his purpose and he will release the provision as you go. It's on the other side of our faith and obedience that we receive the release. We don't get the release before we move we get the release after we move. So Father, we thank you for this great man of God. We thank you for this great woman of God. 
God, there will be opposition that comes against him and his wife. But I thank you, Father, for your word declares in Romans chapter eight. <laughs> if God be for us, <laughs> who can be against us? What can be against us? Hmm. Your word declares in the book of Psalms, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. I thank you, Holy Father. I bless you that you will show up and show out in the life of Bishop and Lady Smith, oh God. Thank you that even as they move in this new direction, you will manifest your glory. And thank you, Father, that you've made Bishop to be a favor magnet. God, you've made Lady Jessica to be a favor magnet. That everywhere they go, that favor is drawn to them, oh God. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Holy Father. We bless you and we give you glory, oh God, in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus. And by faith, we call it done. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Bishop, man of God, let's stay in touch, man of God. I'd be honored to follow up with you and just however I can be of support to you. I'd be glad to support you, man of God, however I can in Jesus name. Amen. Um, who did I have next? Miss Dorothy. And then I'm gonna pray for Benjula. Um, did I call for Miss Dorothy? I think I call for Miss Dorothy. Okay, Miss Dorothy and then Benjula, and then I gotta go to bed. <laughs> okay. Amen. All right. I love that. Benjula said, I connect with that word too. That's right. That's right, Benjula. See, Bishop Smith, this is what I teach the people of God, that we got to be greedy. We got to be greedy for God's word. So if there is a word that I speak over Bishop August Smith and his wife, Lady Jessica, but it bears witness with your spirit, it confirms something in your spirit. It causes your baby to leap. Well, even though I'm speaking that over Bishop and Lady Smith, you grab a hold of that too. Say, I, I agree with that word for me too. Praise God. Give me some of that. Lord, give me some of that. <laughs> Y'all got to learn. Y'all got to learn, baby. I promise you. Ain't no way that I'm sitting out here in the desert and a package comes, a special package delivery. Yeah. Spring water for Bishop August Smith and Lady Jessica. Yeah. Special spring water. Sorry, you guys. It's only for them. Only for them. The devil is a lie. I'm going to sit right there and say, excuse me, excuse me. I'm going to need to get some of that water you got. Praise God. I wish I would be sitting over here dry as a desert fly and ain't no water nowhere and the spring water coming to Bishop and Lady Jessica. And I'm sitting over here, my mouth all dry. My lips looking white like I've been eating powdered donuts, praise God. And you think I'm going to be over here dying of thirst? And I'm going to let, no, I, excuse me, excuse me. I don't mean no harm. I'm going to need some of that. You just give me a cap full, praise God. Give me a cap full. <laughs> Listen, you got to be greedy for God. <laughs> Listen, I wish I would be sitting over here. Okay, thank you, Bishop Kilpatrick. Amen. All right, I'm gonna pray for Miss Dorothy and then let me pray for, uh, let me, <laughs> yeah, come on, Bishop. How much is it for a cup of water in my hand? Praise God. Just pull some of that spring water. Bishop August Smith, can you pull some of that spring water in my hand? How much is it for a little puddle in my hand? Praise God. <laughs> and while you're at it, how much is it for one rib? You know. <laughs> ah, Father, we thank you. We bless you for Miss Dorothy Evans tonight. Mm, yes, God, I thank you. Thank you for blessing this great woman of God. Thank you, Lord God, for the manifestation of favor. Yes, God. Oh, Miss Dorothy, lift your hands, great woman of God. I know you might be tired. You might even be laying in bed, but I want you to lift your hands unto the Lord right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. I thank you. God, I speak total divine health, healing, and restoration 
over her body, over her mind. Yeah. God, you are Jehovah Rapha. You are the Lord God that heals. I speak total health and healing and restoration over her body and over her family, oh God, in the name of Jesus, my God. Ms. Dorothy, I know we have not had a conversation at all, but I hear the spirit of God that the enemy has been trying to attack your body and trying to attack people in your family in Jesus' name. We speak blessings of healing and restoration in the name of Jesus. Yes, God, we speak healing and divine restoration in Jesus' name. Yes, God. Yes, God, we thank you. We honor you and we bless you, Lord God. And I thank you also that you will manifest your glory in a unique way in Miss Dorothy's life. Thank you for this season of release, this season of manifestation, 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 manifestation. I thank you, Father for the release in Jesus' name. Thank you that she will hear and obey your word. Miss Dorothy, don't compromise, woman of God. Whatever the Lord told you to do, you gotta do that thing fully. And don't worry about folks. Don't worry about folks, forget them. Forget them. We ain't sitting up here waiting on people's approval, waiting on people to validate you. Nope, you know what God said, you gotta do that thing. And do it to the letter. Partial obedience is disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience. So, Father, thank you for blessing Miss Dorothy. Thank you for strengthening her in her body and in her spirit, God, and God causing her to be in the right place at the right time, being found faithful, doing the right things, and you will connect her to the right people and the right opportunities in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And it is so. Hallelujah. Sharita, I haven't forgotten about you, baby. Let me pray for Miss Benjula. Father, I thank you. I bless you for Miss Benjula. I thank you. Yes, God. Oh, yes, Miss Benjula. 2023 is your year, my dear. 2023 is your year. We know that God is going to bless your business. Miss Benjula, I declare this to you in Jesus' name at 147 in the morning. Friday, the sixth day of the year, Miss Benjula, God is going to bring increase to your business as you embrace the ministry assignment that God has given you to do. The business will not prosper first until you fully embrace, Miss Benjula, the ministry assignment. You no longer get to sit on the sideline and be in a support role only. Say that again, woman of God. You no longer get to sit on the sideline in a support role only. All right. You can still support. Even though I'm a leader, I love supporting. I can go and just hold the man of God's bag. Bring his extra clothes. Go take his shoes to get shined. I'm a man that has armor bearers. I love serving as an armor bearer. I have no problem. I love serving. But sometimes we give ourselves to serving, 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 and abundantly serving because we're kind of forfeiting the position of leading. This year, Miss Benjula, God is elevating you into some positions of leadership. You will no longer be able to serve in support roles only. So get ready, woman of God. Get ready. Because just as sure as you, just as soon as you fully embrace the ministry assignment, then God is going to start bringing elevation to your business, increase to your business, open doors for your business. So, Father, we thank you and bless you for Miss Benjula. I thank you for increase. God, she has served so faithfully in being a support, being a help, aiding and assisting in so many areas. But God, I thank you that this year, 2023, is her time to come forward, her time to go and let her light shine, that men will see her good works. God, that you will be glorified in heaven. Thank you, Father. This will be the year that she begins to open her mouth and speak the word, speak the word, speak the word. Speak the word that you placed in her belly, oh God. I thank you, Holy Father. I bless you for her life. And thank you for the ministry assignment that you have called her to 
in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. <laughs> Don't worry, Miss Benjula. You know how to reach me. You know how to reach me. You got plenty of great men and great women of God who are ready to support you and pour into you. You just got to be ready to speak, woman of God. All right. Who do I have last? Uh, Miss Sharita. Um, Sharita, which son are we praying for? I know it better not look. Which son are we praying for, Sharita? I'm going to have to fly back out to California and get my belt on somebody. You will not be an embarrassment, Miss Benjula. You will not be an embarrassment. Bless you, Ray Ross. Blessings to you and Lady Denise. Bless you, man of God. Blessings and protection over you as you travel in Jesus' name. Bryson, Bryson is cutting up hamburger. All right. So, Father God, I thank you, Father, for Miss Sharita. I bless you for her life. God, I stand in the gap, Lord God, for Bryson. Father, the enemy is trying to lure him in through gang violence, through drugs and alcohol. But God, I thank you because your daughter Sharita has served you faithfully and because she has served you faithfully and she stands in the gap, Lord God. I thank you, Holy God, that you also bless her seed in the name of Jesus. God, Bryson is a miracle child. So, Father, we speak miraculous restoration in Jesus name. We speak miraculous restoration over his life in Jesus' name. God, we claim, we claim his soul for the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Satan, we come against you in Jesus' name. We bind you, devil, you evil spirit of violence. We bind the spirit of witchcraft, rebellion in Jesus' name. We come against that spirit right now in Jesus' name. Devil, we take authority over you. The blood of Jesus is against you. And we boldly declare and decree that Bryson belongs to God. His name is written in the Lamb's book of life. We claim his soul right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you that Bryson will have a prodigal son moment where he will wake up and come to himself and come back to honoring his mother, and more so, God, honoring you with his very life. That he will come to know you as Savior and Lord, even in his youth. We thank you, Holy God, and we bless you. Yes, God, surround him with peers who love you and are sold out for you. So he can see examples of young people who are on fire for you, God. Young people who love you. Young people who are sold out for you. Surround him with young men and young women who are devoted to you to live in holy without compromise. We thank you, Holy Father. We bless you. And we claim Bryson's soul in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 God, I thank you. Hallelujah. God, I thank you for Miss Donna B. I thank you, Lord God, for blessing Donna B, prospering her cooking show. Bless the works of her hands, strengthen her body for the assignment. I speak peace and deliverance over her household so that she is able to produce in excellence what you have called her to do in the name of Jesus. God, as we leave this broadcast tonight, but never leave in your presence, I thank you, Father, for your, I speak blessing tonight, Lord God, over Donna Gordon. I speak blessings, Lord God, over Miss Dorothy, over Lady Felicia. I speak blessings, Lord God, over Miss Delena. I speak blessings, Lord God, over Sean Janae. I speak blessings, Lord God, over Miss Sharita. I speak blessings, Lord God, over Miss Lenice, over Prophetess Tawana. I speak blessings, Lord God, over King Charles, Pastor Jackie. I speak blessings, Lord God, over Ray Ross and his wife, Lady Denise. In Jesus' name, God, I thank you, holy God. I bless you that you will do a new thing in the lives of these, your people. God, as we have heard your word tonight, help us to be prepared. I speak blessings over Miss Aisha 
in the name of Jesus. Help us to be prepared, equipped, empowered, and thoroughly furnished for every good work, every assignment. I speak blessings over the lives of every person that came into this broadcast live and by way of replay. Thank you, Father, for blessing us. Yes, God, I speak blessings over Miss Jarnine in Jesus' name. I speak blessings over her business, over her um, over her event coming up next weekend, oh God, in Jesus' name. Her She Conquered event, oh God, She Conquers event. Thank you, Father, for all the women that will come and will be blessed in Jesus' name. Yes, God, we lift up every prayer request and petition to you by faith. In Jesus' name, I speak blessings over Prophetess Tawana. I speak blessings over my brother, Dr. Daryl Chapman. In Jesus' name, I speak blessings over Jesse Hearns. In Jesus' name, we lift these petitions up to you by faith. We thank you, Holy Father, that you have heard us, for we have prayed according to your will, and your will is your word. We stand on it. We believe it. And by faith, we receive it in the mighty in the matchless name of Jesus. And everybody who agrees with that prayer said, thank God, amen, amen, and amen. We speak blessings, Lord God, over Miss Carlinda. We speak blessings of healing and restoration over Carlinda's life, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Love you all, abundant blessings. Thank you so much, Bishop. Thank you, Benjula. Thank you, Delena. I appreciate all of you. Yes, I am gonna get some rest. Uh, it's going to take me about an hour, hour and a half to unwind, but we're going to get it in at some point. Amen. In the meantime, y'all stay blessed and not stressed. Walk in your power and authority and don't take none of that devil's mess. Amen. I speak blessings over my dear sister, Lisa, in Jesus name. Amen. I love you. Blessings on you, family. This is your brother, Apostle G. Hightower signing off. We'll see you next time on this awesome prayer line. God bless you, family.